Welcome to the OC, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> We're never letting it die. It, it's going to be my just my new phrase. How I greet people, I'm just going to say, welcome to the OC, bitch. <laughs> the Saucy Sibs, they start every episode with, welcome to the OC, bitch. Why do they do that? I don't know. They like went to the OC once and watched the OC. <laughs> they, they went but once. Welcome back to the Saucy Sibs podcast. I'm Nicodemus. I'm Francesca. And uh, this is our show about eating, drinking, and talking shit all around the US. Yep. Or wherever we are in the world. Two siblings, best friends friends mm-hmm. and we're just going after it going after it doing whatever we want because jobs are boring <laughs> <laughs> ew. Yeah. ew jobs sorry i relate so hard to the simple life and every time like i see a still from it i'm like why is this nick and i like it the simple oh life God. like is a parody and they're heiresses we are not <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. like, like every have. time i'm like ew i'm like it she's like paris like hey babe we just like aren't feeling it today, so we're not coming in. And I'm like, I've done that. I and it's funny because like they have the safety net of the money to do that. We don't. <laughs> no, we don't. No, <laughs> we don't. We still do. Yeah. We still pretend I don't know who we the, do. Who we think we are. Mm-hmm. One time I walked into work one time after like I was off for two days and I spent like so much money out. And um someone was like, Oh Nick, how was your weekend? And I was like, Great. And apparently I think I'm a goddamn Kardashian because the way that I was spending money was <laughs> out of this world (laughs) yeah no sometimes i think we just spend it and we think there's like an unlimited fountain and Mm. there's not there's absolutely not there's yep money doesn't grow on trees i've heard it but somehow it it comes to me (laughs) (laughs) saucy sibs tip number three money doesn't grow on trees but anyway we're back to number three we're always doing different numbers we're like saucy sibs tip number nine let's we can like try and keep it in order i thought it was funny because we don't know (laughs) the number it's just like yeah (laughs) saucy sibs tip number 22 (laughs) um but francesca what are you drinking over there well here's the thing i tried to wake up it's like 10 a.m here and I tried to wake up and have like a little collagen coffee, like all Ooh. the little influencers do. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe it like makes their hair, skin and nails better. Maybe, you know, I'm just always being influenced. And anyway, it was <laughs> disgusting. It was awful. And I will never do it again. The vibes were off. Um, so I just poured myself a glass of red wine instead. Mm. Classic. <laughs> But, Nick, what kind of wine are we drinking? Well, I'm not actually sure. Um, It's a blend of three different reds that were just unopened bottles that uh, Our mother had. had. Yeah. Yeah. So we we like to call it a blend. (laughs) But really, it's not. like It's just a blend of different bottles that are opened. Right. So it's just like a nice California blend. Those are the ones that she doesn't get mad that I drink because it's like, oh. (laughs) They've been out for like a day or two. Those are for you. Because there's certain shelves we're allowed to steal wine from our parents' um, wine cooler. Mm-hmm. And the bottom shelf is not allowed. The bottom shelf is not allowed, which no. is usually the opposite in like grocery stores and stuff. But yes, we are um, in Missouri at our parents' house right now. <laughs> um, it might take a couple episodes for us to explain how we got here. Exactly. But we are recording in our brother's, other brother, there's a third saucy sip. We are recording in Maximiliano's um childhood bedroom and he wouldn't really want us in here he's not gonna love hearing that he's very (laughs) particular about his things but he has like the most padded room there's carpet there's window treatments and my mother has horses for dogs and it's like the most protection from their noises right and when we say horses we mean horses like they're giant animals newfoundland great pyrenees my dumpster dog za also designer dog bambi who she's just the most beautiful girl in the world she is but that being said we do need to protect our sound quality Mm -hmm. you know i'm an audio engineer now so i'm thinking about these things so you know we're just living the dream in our parents basement (laughs) (laughs) so if you weren't jealous before you should be now how'd they go from monterey to their parents basement listen i'll tell you how we um thought that we were like (laughs) let's just like go have a nature moment for like a few months but that's just a distraction distraction so we need to get to work um on actually podcasting it's really hard when you're exploring every day to actually get work done yeah you know recording podcasts from the chevy equinox named regina is all fun and games but it kind of sucks editing it um but you know (laughs) oh it's hard to like edit your podcast in a tent (laughs) (laughs) 
Weird. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> yeah. It can be done. Not my best. But no, yeah. So we're back here in Missouri, uh, helping our parents with a few things. And we're going to be here like through the holidays and stuff like that. But we're having a very Italian mm-hmm. holiday time. Exactly. <laughs> and I can't wait. No, it's my favorite time to be here in the holidays. Right. And then we'll figure out kind of our next move. They're launching a new company. My parents own a Jello shot maker. Yeah, the Saucy Sibs parents own a Jello shot company. So, <laughs> of course, <laughs> if that <laughs> that says anything, <laughs> helps you figure out why we are the way we are. Our parents patented a Jello shot maker. Mm-hmm. And people always think I'm joking when I say that, and they're almost like, "Wait, what do you mean?" And I'm like, yeah, "But it, yes, it. <laughs> that's what my parents do full time." <laughs> right? Is they like, invented a Jello shot maker? Yeah. But anyway. So last time we talked, we were leaving San Diego in our hellish Airbnb. It was actually a really nice Airbnb. It was just placed in a very hellish hellish experience. Oh, since then, they've tried to charge us. Oh, my God. So a haunting in San Diego is still haunting us. We are still being haunted. They tried to say... A pet-friendly Airbnb. And they... Of course. So I have a dog. Fine. So after this whole thing, we should have just like gotten a new Airbnb, left Mm -hmm. the situation because we were already incurring $24 a day in extra parking that, you know, listen to the episode. It was a nightmare. So then they start sending us pictures saying that we found dog hair in the apartment. So don't worry. I got seven angles of like Zaz dog hair all over the apartment. And sent to us. Sent to us and saying, oh, it's actually a $35 extra a day for a pet. A day. Yeah, like, no, they're trying to scam us again. I was already scammed. Right. (laughs) And now they want more money. And I'm like, wait, so I, with the parking and with the dog charge, I could have gotten an Airbnb that was $60 more a night for a week. Yeah. We would have been in a little beachside mansion. Yeah, about 60 for sure. I Mm -hmm. know. And that's the whole thing that I'm just like, yo, guys, we can't be the first ones that have fallen for this little trick. And lo and behold. Yeah. The... I mean, the reviews of this place. Apparently, we didn't scroll down long enough. I know, which I thought we did. So we left San Diego and then we went to Scottsdale, Arizona. Really? Just because I had guy friends from St. Louis and Scottsdale. And one of them was visiting a bunch of the bros. So I was best friends with a group of dudes in um, high school. And a lot of them went to ASU. And we knew we were already going to Arizona. So it's just like, dude, let's go to Arizona right now. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're in Scottsdale because apparently we are just continuing our trip that somehow went from being nature focused to house hunters, millionaires. edition. (laughs) So apparently Nick and I love a retirement community (laughs) with nice houses. Yeah. Like if there are upwards of $20 million houses surrounding it, apparently that's just where we want to be. I don't know what we're shopping for, um, but we've just found ourselves in these retirement communities, and I'm not mad about it. It's been the funniest thing because, yeah, we all have been going out into like nature and like sleeping in our car. Then all of a sudden, we, you know, just kind of go wherever something finds us, and it just happens to be around these massive houses. And so it's been quite a interesting trip. I still don't know the theme of it, you know, about but House I Hunters guess, Millionaires Edition, House Hunters Millionaires Edition, and Street Corn. But we'll yeah. get to that. <laughs> House Hunters Millionaires Edition. That is our theme of our five week road trip. <laughs> really? And this was my first time to Scottsdale. I floated around a little bit of Arizona before, but um, I actually really liked Scottsdale and I see why a lot of people retire there. And it's really nice. It's put together really well. What is the slogan of it? Oh, most livable city. Most livable it city. Is. I mean, I agree. I mean, it. <laughs> it's lovely. It's so it's lovely. It's so weird. The nice places are just lovely to be in. I know. Um, but we went to Old Town, went to the clubs, we hung with the bros. Um, Which I also wasn't expecting how many like clubs, like capital C there are. I mean, we were out there and there's just all these clubs almost fighting for who had the loudest music. There it was looks like, like t- Vegas. If you go to Old Town Scottsdale, down this one street is just like bottle service and the the bartenders the girls are in full on lingerie lingerie big mm-hmm. I mean, asses they're gorgeous i, yeah, I no, thought i was watching asses. A, perfect asses i thought i was watching like a doja cat music video yeah. with some of these bartenders but so some of my guy friends they're you know just a little broy they make a lot of money and they just want to like buy us drinks and like hang out and like you know the saucy sibs if i'm going to say a weakness of ours nick we're not like that great turning down a drink (laughs) yeah it's like 
I want to say we're not the best people you should keep buying drinks for, but we're definitely not people you can't buy drinks for yeah, because they will be drink. drink and I yeah. won't punch a cop in the face or anything, no, but I will fine. drink them all and it's going to be a night. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to be out because I'm probably not saying no. I actually had to say no a couple of times and I still blacked out. Yeah. And then wait, that was so funny because you got outed Francesca. Because I wake up the next morning. I had went home earlier with one of your friends. Early-ish. I mean, not that early. So I had gone home just a bit earlier than you. And then so the next morning, you guys slept until 4 p.m. Stop. Capital 4 p.m. And our friend that we were staying with, Matt, he was just like, yeah. And then you just called that guy on the phone a lot and then talked to him. And I said, excuse me, what? Okay. Can you repeat that? Yeah. Matt, what did she do? Honestly, like my best friends are going to listen to this and they're going to be like, again, we're revisiting this again. But here's the thing. Okay, it's fine. We can out me. Uh, we can talk, we can talk about it. We can but talk I about just want to say that I've turned the page. <laughs> I'm going by Cheska now. Capital C. Nicholas, thank you. And um, I'm just a woman who doesn't do this anymore. I'm not revisiting it. We're leaving that in the Southwest. Um, Sedona has healed me. We'll get to that. So, but you... um, yeah. Okay. So... So what exactly am I outing you for? <laughs> so, okay, listen, I do this thing when I black out and I don't know this girl. I've never met this girl. She doesn't have the same values as I do. She doesn't have the same self-worth apparently. So I like to think of myself who has, I have it together. I like who I am. I value who I am. And <laughs> this is such a, no, this is just such a buildup to like, this is just like, you know, <laughs> Let, let me just preface you with I have self worth, but <laughs> but I I don't know this girl. Um, I will. And here's the thing: like for me, when I say I'm blackout, I routinely um forget to eat an adequate amount for drinking. So it might be like four or five Tito's or a few glasses of wine, and then who is she? We don't know her. Okay, fine. And I will go, and I might call my ex who was never even my boyfriend. <laughs> my, but we're still calling him an ex. Fine. I, I might call him like 40 times. 40 times. I mean, no. Wait, Capital more like four. Eight, more like eight. Mm, um, at and the psychoticness of it is that he'll usually answer. Because I have him blocked on everything. Phones, WhatsApp, all of my Instagram accounts, um, and Snapchat. I have blocked. I have moved on. It's no longer a part of my life. But then I guess sometimes I will unblock him just to call him. <laughs> Are we going here? We're going here. All right. All right. Well, um, I do this insane thing where I make him tell him why he loves me. <laughs> <sighs> yep. There's a lot to unpack there. Oh. Like an extreme depth. Oh. So, you know, I've been here with Francesca through this uh, <laughs> breakup process that wasn't really even to break up with. And so then we're in Scottsdale. I thought we were past this, got a little blackout. <laughs> and then our friend out there was like, yeah, you called that guy like 40 times. And I'm like, oh. No, he had heard me talking for a couple hours. He said he had to, like, turn on the TV in his room and, like, shut the door because I wouldn't get off the phone. Meanwhile, Nick is on the same couch as me sleeping. Passed out. Would have never known. Like a little baby raccoon that I am, just wrapped up in my little blanket, you know? <laughs> um, But our friend outed me. <laughs> and so I do this thing where I, I'll need such reassurance and... It's, I don't know if it's like a power trip or really what it is. I probably should go to therapy. Um, that's not a probably, but that's <laughs> definitely should. Everyone should go to therapy. I mean, though. absolutely. I miss therapy. Therapy's hot nowadays. Oh, it's so chic. Yeah. But I, yeah, I like need him to tell me why he loves me. We catch up, we chat. And then I say, okay, well, like, this was nice, but I'm going to block you again, and I hate you, and I'm never going to speak to you again. And it's <laughs> this extremely toxic thing <laughs> that I do. And then you wake up in the morning as if it never happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just, I shove that shame and all of that just so deep down. Mm. We don't even, I don't even think, I'm not even embarrassed. 
which I should I mean, be. I just don't. I'm embarrassed. I see. <laughs> I'm Nick I'm woke up and he was of. like, the amount of secondhand embarrassment that I have for you <laughs> is just off the charts. It's immeasurable. I mean, kind of. But hold up to that. I say one time. Um, I think <laughs> I think a lot of people do that, Francesca. So I can't be too secondhand embarrassed. I don't know. For you. Like as like a 31 year old woman. You would think that I'd be over this. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Maybe like I really just think it's an ego thing. An because ego, like your like, ego. I like really, you want... yes, my ego. Like I just like want someone to be obsessed with me. Right. But I don't want to date them. I don't like them. I don't respect them. My right. family doesn't like them. It's really just not someone that I want in my life. I feel like you should journal about that. Like really dig <laughs> deep into like what exactly that is, and like putting it into words can really help. I want to hear if other people have blackout FaceTimes with their friends or if anybody else still calls an ex and you just you just don't talk about it the next day. I even delete the calls. You delete the calls? I delete the calls and I delete the texts. And I will go so far as unblock him. And if I text him and he doesn't respond, I will do this thing. Like, let's say I'm out and I don't want people to know I'm trying to talk to him. I will call him and hang up just so he gets a ping. (laughs) That I called so that I he knows to respond to my text message. Because, like, when I'm in that state, I need that attention on demand. And I will, like, kind of lose it if I don't get it. Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't know what that is. Um, I don't really answer phone calls at, like, 3 a.m. Well, yeah, that's why I, I never... call multiple times to wake them up, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Out of their slumber. Um, but yeah, oh this person gosh. hurt me and I don't want them in my life. So I don't, I don't understand, but like blackout me has an entire <laughs> relationship with this person. I'm, I'm sure people listening are like, God, I do that too. I'm so glad. So I glad. hope so. Someone please tell me they've done it before too. Or I'm just batshit crazy. And here we are. Cause I don't do this. So I cannot relate. Francesca. <laughs> yeah. Love you, support you, but can't relate. <laughs> So then well, we went to Sedona for a for some healing. For some healing. <laughs> <We> went, <laughs> uh, just a little like soul healing. Um, if you don't know, people go to Sedona specifically for the energy vortexes to speed up their spiritual process, right? right. Their spiritual awakening, their inner healing. Um, do you know about the vortexes? So I had heard about these vortexes. I mean, there's so many places around the Southwest that are just so such big metaphysical communities, spiritual communities, um, where people really go to kind of have like a retreat with like nature and anywhere from eating vegan to drum circles to hiking and backpacking. It's literally gorgeous. Um, but the vortexes, let, let's talk about these vortexes because what I had heard from them, they are at places where energy is really like coming from the earth like it's no it's like a whirlwind kind of of energy so it's just a electromagnetic funnel of energy that's created and it's a funnel that you've seen like in like a vortex in nature yeah would be like a tornado a whirlwind water going down a drain right but this is an energy vortex and there are these energetic lines on the earth called ley lines and it's always at a um, cross section of a ley line. So I had heard about this and we went and visited them, but they're not just like areas. They're literally on Google Maps. Yeah. Like, so I thought we were going to have to like ask a shaman where this vortex was. I thought it was like a big, yeah, area. Like where no, do it's they like say... pinpointed and you can go find them on Google Maps and there's different types. Yeah, the vortexes so ma- that do different vi- things. There's vortexes that go up or spiral up. There's vortexes that spiral down. Some are there's masculine, electromagnetic. Some are and I gotta say, we went on this gorgeous hike. So we did the Cathedral Rock, which is kind of like one of the most like it's biggest. like what you do in Sedona. And if yeah. you're passing through, first of all, you have to visit Sedona. It's actually my favorite city on this earth. I have spent my birthday there numerous times in life because it's just the energy is palpable. It's like the landscape even is so breathtakingly beautiful that it kind of, it moves you. It is a gluten-free vegan Mecca. We were living out our dreams. Yeah. And so we had went and, um, the hike, all of that. Amazing. But then also I kind of did feel something and I, I really am. I really am like a hippie at heart. 
who, you know, does metaphysical things and like I'm a spiritual guy, but I'm not really like that sensitive to it. So I'm not sitting here like, Oh my God, do you feel the energy? Like, let's like, you know, I am a bit woo woo, but I'm not sitting here being like, yeah, I definitely feel like the energetic response from this place is vortexing up. No, not me, but I will say I kind of felt something different there. I mean, I, you know, I'm super sensitive. You're to super energy. sensitive. Yeah. Like I can't even be in certain cities because like the energy upsets me. <laughs> Um, but Sedona, it just feels peaceful. What people say is that it, yeah, it speeds up kind of Mm -hmm. anything that you've been not facing in your life. It'll Mm -hmm. really bring that to the forefront, but it's just wildly peaceful, super peaceful. It's a little bit of a parody of itself, to be honest, when you meet people there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody is in the metaphysical community. My name is Ashoka and I only drink green juice and I'm vegan. And, and I want my green juice to, to be completely, you know, made from structured water <laughs> and it's attuned to 528 is this, megahertz. Is this water structured? That's a thing, guys. <laughs> but no. So, um, yeah, I kind of felt like I used to do a lot of sweat lodges as a kid. And so when I went there, you kind of <laughs> when you're really dehydrated as a, kid. as a kid. Yeah, I did. What, like in middle school? No, I was in high school. Can yeah. I talk real quick? He's going to be so mad at me for bringing this up. What? Nicholas asked me if toddlers were in middle school yesterday. He was like, yeah, like her cousin. She's like a toddler. She's seven. And I, I-, I thought toddlers <laughs> were like before preteen. Like, so you go from an infant <laughs> to a toddler to a preteen. <laughs> yeah, I no, thought young toddlers kid- are age one to two. <laughs> yeah. So that's they what are Google- not. There are yeah. no toddlers okay. in middle school. <laughs> So Nick was going to sweat lodges when he was a toddler. <laughs> Just... No, well, okay, that's something I honestly, yes, Francesca, I did not know that. So we I call guess... these Nickisms. Nick has these things where it's like they're almost right, but they're like a little off. Like it's like the definition. So he's like, oh, like thinking like a young kid, like okay, like close, but that's not Just what a toddler. Not is. Quite. Yeah. Just not exactly. I will do an entire episode on Nickisms sometimes. That's just one that happened yesterday. Uh, the Nickisms, you'll pick up on them because sometimes <laughs> they just happen. Sometimes I just, we have to have a Google war because he won't believe me. He was like, no, a toddler until a toddler. we're a preteen. And it's I was like, like, I I firmly know. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to I'm gonna go ahead and like stand true. I know that you're wrong on this one. No, yeah. I was very wrong. Toddlers have a specific definition. Yeah. <laughs> but because uh, they toddle around. Yes, I guess. they're like little... Yeah, they can't walk yet. But aren't we all toddling around? <laughs> We're just toddling around. <laughs> so, Sedona, Vortexes are on Google Maps. Yeah. Well, we were talking about good food in the Southwest. The and food is so bomb in the Southwest. It's better. It's and so we good. kind of... So, our favorite restaurants, and honestly, completely worth going to in Scottsdale, were Diego Ooh. Pops and Instagram Dream... We have a little highlight on the on the Instagram. And then Sumo Maya, which was an Asian Mexican fusion. It, it was Asian, Chinese, Japanese. There was sushi. Mixed. I had edamame. I had a king crab guacamole. Yeah. I had tacos. I had wagyu that was like cooked on a little hot stone. That was so cool. The that was one of the on- best meals. Yeah. But then we ate its elote in Sedona. In Which, Sedona, that uh, that Elote Cafe. Tell us about Elote. We were suggested to it, but we went there, and apparently they are like booked up until January, but they had a cancellation for bar seats, which I didn't even know people like reserved yeah. bar seats. They had a cancellation for bar seats, and we got in, and apparently we're on a street corn tour of the U.S. We've had it like everywhere. Honestly, Diego pops. I thought that was the best street corn I'd ever had since I left Aspen. Then Sumo Maya unbelievable but elote i mean they're wow. elote they're named after it was the complex flavors it was creamy i don't even know how to describe the spices i tasted i don't either you know how some dishes just have such like a depth to it like a mm-hmm. complexity i feel like i was reading a book <laughs> that's, that's how that's that, how much depth was wow. in the street corn no i'm serious that's such a there good were way chapters to put it. to it yeah i agree um it's it, if you can make a reservation for a lote in Sedona. Go. Do it I now. will plan your vacation for you. Really. There's hikes. There's food. 
If you want to like really Cafes. find yourself, at least a week for sure. Yeah. There's lots of workshops that happen and tours. So Cathedral Rock, what you'll have to do, it's like the most famous hike there. You know, <laughs> we saw three women in wedding dresses hike up it. It is not like the easiest hike. It is not. Well, it's not an easy hike at all. Everybody I mean, couldn't believe my little tiny animal. You did take Za up <laughs> this rock. Wait, I actually have a great video I'll post to the Instagram about when you, since Za is in a harness on a leash, you were kind of repelling her up these rocks sometimes. I was afraid she was going to like pull you forward or pull you backward or something like that, but she really is but a spider Zah dog. Will go, she trusts me. And when yeah. she's connected to me, she will run up a straight rock face. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I was so lucky to get a dog that will chill for 12 hours if yeah. we're traveling or that will literally climb up a vertical rock face. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, she's insane. People are like, how is she up here? How are you doing that? And I was like, I we don't understand who Za is. Like, <laughs> I can barely climb up these rocks. How is she doing it? <laughs> and I'm like, we don't know. Za is like her own intense person. <laughs> um, but no, there were these women and they they didn't change at the top into their wedding dresses. They hiked up in their wedding dresses. The rock in Sedona is very red. Yeah. And so, and it's sandstone. It's like this red sandstone. And they, oh, here's some more wine, Francesca. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Oop. The red sandstone in Sedona. So they were literally hiking in hiking boots underneath their dress. And they were getting this red dust all over their wedding dress. And I'm all about getting the shot. But here's something. I'm going to go ahead and say it now. Um, That's just one thing I'm not going to do on my wedding day. Love to hike. One of my favorite pastimes. I'm not hiking in my wedding dress ever. I won't do it. I want to be a little tipsy with a glass of champagne in my hand right. on like Lake Como. You know, I respect it. I, I'm just never going to do I it. I think it's about the journey. But even, <laughs> even <laughs> looking at those finished product photos, does it just kind of seem out of place? It like, kind of takes away. I'm why like, is I, there a woman in a wedding dress on top of this mountain? People love it. People love, and hopefully I don't get, like, hate for this. Like, I think it's really cool. You have, like, an amazing background, like, photo. But I, I don't want the background to, like, steal the show. The show is me and my husband wow. on my wedding day. <laughs> I want the background to steal my show. No, but yeah. I guess I guess you're but right. it steals I mean, the thunder. Like, I'm like, does yeah. the Grand Canyon need to be in the background of my wedding photo? No, stare at me in my dress. Wait, that kind of reminded me of the Britney Spears music video, I'm Not a Girl, Not Yet a Woman, where she's at the Grand Canyon. Oh, I don't know. Not, you, we should watch that. Okay. Um, yeah, because how could you, just a woman in just a dress, like compared to the Grand Canyon? The Grand Canyon, and it's it's my day, no. <laughs> right? Grand Canyon. Today's not about you. Wait, I think that's kind of a good point. Because I think it's, like, it's a huge point. People do it so much, and I'm like, isn't it enough that you spent an exorbitant amount of money on this dress, and it's your celebration and your wedding, like? Maybe don't let, you know, the rolling hills of Scotland <laughs> steal Scott, your Scotland. thunder. Scotland. No, <laughs> rolling not Scotland. Scotland. No, I just like have a <laughs> no. specific image in my head. There's like this wedding <laughs> photographer who's out in Scotland and she captures gorgeous photos. But it's like, it's gorgeous, like because of the background. It's It could be any bride or groom in right. the foreground of this photo. Or just a woman in a white tablecloth. Because it, you're not really looking at like the not, detail yeah. of the lace and how it, mm -hmm. you know, is cut around her bosom <laughs> yes Nick. i just feel like whenever i say decolletage decolletage um <laughs> no yeah i see your dress i see the grand canyon and i just think to myself yeah you climbed up there i guess it's like to give more it's just kind of like this epic thing so if you're gonna like hang it in your house then instead of it just being you i'm, I'm just trying to think through their thought process but right i can't really relate because i always like to be the center of attention <laughs> So if it's on my wedding, <laughs> I just Francesca can't really go to like really cool nature spots, you know. Like no, it's, it's just like you know. Hey guys, like I see that <laughs> I see you at Mount Everest, but wedding. I exist. <laughs> <laughs> no, just like specifically on my wedding. No, That's... yeah, I I kind of know what you, I know exactly what you mean. So it it's dwarfed. So you're really just left to think, wow. Yeah, like oh, like, it's a beautiful photo. But you it's did not... it. <sighs> yeah, it's just not about it. <laughs> Hmm. No, hey, your wedding photos are beautiful. <laughs> like, Do you also beautiful. think people put too many of their wedding photos around the house? I've just noticed it. I think it's a red flag. Whoa, I've never thought about that. It's just like, I don't know. You know who has like the most and 
I don't even know. Like, okay, so Sheena from Vanderpump Rules, Mm -hmm. when she first got married, every mounted photo in her home was of her wedding. And it's almost like couples who put too many photos of themselves on Instagram. Like, it's such a red flag. It's like, okay. Yeah. It's just trying too hard. (laughs) I feel like they're overcompensating for something that's not there in the relationship. Is that what you mean is a red flag? Yes. Like, that they're over... Wow. Um, And I think wedding photos are part of that. No, exactly. I think some people live more for the wedding than the relationship. And that's something I've never really thought about before. Um, Oh, I analyze it. uh, (laughs) When I see couples post way too many pictures on (laughs) Instagram, I'm like, this is how you know they're going downhill. You know what... (laughs) Um, you know, what always kind of freaks me out is like when people take like engagement photos, but they're not engaged. No. It's like, so you just hired a photographer oh. to take couple photos. Have you ever and seen couple that? Couple photos without the engagement. Has this happened? Yeah. Don't they, say the name. So, you know, someone who has taken, hired a photographer just to like capture the essence of their relationship. But it's not yeah. like an engagement photo shoot. It's just like a we love each other shoot. Yeah. But you don't it's... love her enough to put a ring on it. Well, I think they were definitely on their Here, way. I would say maybe a couple who doesn't like believe in marriage and they never would. Of course, they can get a couple photos together. But if they are the type of people who are in that like heteronormative relationship and it just hasn't gotten there, I feel like that's weird. I think it's super weird. Because I remember looking at those photos that came out. He posted them on Facebook. And I was just like, so are you guys engaged or am I missing something? We just wanted to like capture our beauty and our love outside in the fall leaves. But yeah. not. Or they're just having fun with a camera. I mean. Which I guess. But it's also like. And I don't want to say they can't. Like, I mean, <laughs> you're allowed to take photos of you and your girlfriend with a professional photographer out in the fall foliage. But. Duh. But I'm going to question it. I know. And I might talk a little bit of shit about it on the show. I mean, I'm going to talk shit. We're talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> but huh. uh, I don't know. But I will say on the flip side of that, we actually are the account that we like vehemently, 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 vehemently. God, it's a hard one, guys. I, know. I know how it's spelled, but it's hard to pronounce it. Vehemently. Vehemently in English, American English, and then vehemently in like UK English. God, I, I know, just so want to be English. I know. They're be- it's better. It is. They're better. Yeah. I just want to marry someone that's English <laughs> and maybe they can rub off on me because I am so American. Um, but we vehemently don't like the account influencers in the wild. Why? Okay. This is actually such a thing. Francesca and I love getting the shot. I also love it when other people get the shot. And I respect them for it. Yeah. You it's- can still make memories with like while capturing them people are like oh why don't you like put your phone down and, like enjoy it of course there's extremes but i think there's something we said for taking five minutes out of your time mm-hmm. even 10 minutes out of your entire hike out of whatever to get like a cute photo like a good memory of yourself yeah. oh i'm sorry could you take one more yeah no i can get the I shot have the time. you know it's okay to because the influencers in the wild I don't know if you guys have seen it or not, but it's basically just when someone is like, say, on the beach in their swimsuit and they have their friend or their boyfriend or their boyfriend really making sure that they get a great photo for their Instagram and people will then take photos of them trying to get the photo and like making fun of it. And I'm just like, dude, that's kind of fucked. Like it's cringe. And because I think they are taking it to make fun of them for it being cringe, but it's also cringe because I think in a weird way, people are like jealous because people think being an influencer is not a real job. It's like, Oh, you'll follow 10 girls who take bikini photos on the beach. It's like, they had to host a photo shoot for that. Yeah. Yeah. They had to make pay their friend and margaritas. Exactly. And everyone has like their favorite photo of themselves. Right. Yeah. And there's actually one of the best photos of myself that I've ever taken took five minutes to get. And it was me on a rope swing over a lake. Mm-hmm. And the way that I was I was holding my head upright <laughs> using my upper body strength and my hair was flopping in the wind. And it took a while. And my friend who was taking the photos actually like towards the end of it, she was like, I'm done. If this is not the perfect one. I know. Thank you. But it's actually my favorite photo. And it is still to this day my most liked photo on Facebook. You know? <laughs> and it, I, I know that was a bit annoying to take and we definitely put our time to it. But... Sometimes good ass shit takes some time. Well, yeah, you can't just like expect. Sometimes you have to like invest a little bit of time into this shot. And that's why 
Some people's photos are a lot better than others. So you heard ours it here. Are ours are terrible. Yeah, ours are good. No, we're <laughs> because learning. Because we're really bad at taking the time. I'm we're also so talking bad. to us because we get embarrassed. We're like, oh, I'd rather like enjoy the meal than like take this photo. But like, no, like that's you want to share the experience. We're full time now blogging about what we're eating and drinking and doing. Mm-hmm. So it's like we had this conversation this morning. We need to take the time to take the shot. Right. Yes. We're at a restaurant and they're going to look at us like we're weird and whatever. But... It, to share the experience in like a visually appealing way, I probably can't take it with a photo right. and a flash, right. like randomly just of my guac. It's not interesting. I love candid photos and sometimes they are the best, but not always. So if you're hearing this, influencers in the wild, we're beefing. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to start beef. I think it's rude. It's calling people yeah. out for like doing what they love and, and trying to get the a good shot. And feeling pretty. I know we just went on a rant about women in their <laughs> dresses. <laughs> I know, but we're like, being a little contradicting, but he, you can be all the things. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm just going to start speaking in Instagram quotes. You can be all the things. Yeah, don't let them box you in, hun. You can have conflicting opinions. Mm-hmm. The binary just is oppressive. <laughs> but, but We're but not no. even making fun of that. It's just that, you know what? I'll talk shit if I want to talk shit, and I don't think it's nice, and I want more people to go out and do what they like, and I think a lot of people kind of aren't because they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm getting this photo. I'm the first person to stop and ask someone if they want me to take a photo of them. Yeah. One time, (laughs) you asked to take a photo of someone else's food. Okay, listen. I that wasn't blacked that we out. weren't sitting with. Yeah, listen, I blacked out and I immediately regretted it, and it was completely inappropriate in the dining experience. But <laughs> I, I couldn't figure out if I wanted like these gluten free waffles or the smoothie bowl. Okay, and uh, the smoothie bowl came out at this couple's table next to us, and it was gorgeous. And I just like wanted a photo. And here's here's where I blacked out. Um. At breakfast, not on alcohol. I, you know, get manic. And I, so of course, I'm just kind of like leaning over. I'm taking a photo before they can like touch it of their smoothie bowl. But then I decided it didn't have good enough lighting. I grabbed it and I moved it to, I took it with me to another area for better lighting. And as soon as I was doing it, I was like, this is wildly inappropriate (laughs) and completely i mean as germs like i nobody wants like a stranger touching their smoothie bowl i removed it from in front of this man (laughs) it was his food and i moved it to the to the window to take a photo of it and um i'll never forget that feeling because i was like i've i've messed up they were gracious i set it back down i said thank you so much i'm a food blogger um and i'm gonna go kill myself now because (laughs) i'm just a terrible person. I'm so sorry for ruining your meal. Ta-da. Ta-da. <laughs> Follow me, though. <laughs> I never you just posted them it. your Instagram card? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have Instagram cards, but Maybe should we? we should. No. Follow me. Anyway, <laughs> I'm bright red. Like, it was... I still feel bad. <laughs> really I should are. never... Because if someone did that to me, I mean, whatever. I would just think it would be an experience, but it, it's wrong, and I don't think anyone else should steal other people's food for the shot. Camera eats first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in this establishment hates me and I hate myself. And um, no. cheers. Influencers Nick- in the wild. That's that's why influencers in the wild would like poach you out. And be oh like, my gosh. They, I wow. deserved to be. No, yeah, They're you like definitely this deserve. girl thought it was okay to remove this man's smoothie bowl from his table. I deserve to be crucified for that. Where did these influencers get off? Like what is the I line? I mean that's insane. What is the line? <laughs> that someone ripped me apart. Uh, I... I, I've never been more embarrassed for myself. I never even posted the photo. So it, is, it was like too, too I, like haunting the context. Yeah. yeah. Be like, oh, did you eat I it? felt like no. I exploited this man's sushi bowl <laughs> and his morning. And I felt like I just couldn't um, do that well, to him. We still hate you, Influencers of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> we hate you. Uh-huh. And so... Okay, guys. One thing about me is um, I went to school in New Mexico for college. So I back in the day, I was like a vegan that started growing out my hair. And I was I was really into minimalism. I was only eating raw foods for a bit. Um, but yeah, that was in the Southwest. But it was so funny because I've kind of slowly gotten away from all that. But the moment I go back into the Southwest, like I'm in Sedona and I'm around these spaces, I'm like, oh, should I just like go vegan again? Should I just, is my hair long enough? Like, do I have 
too many possessions. I think I have too many shirts. <laughs> Why do I have five pairs of shoes? <laughs> so my college experience was like fraternities, sororities, like very what you see on TV for college. Nicodemus's was more like psychedelics in the desert. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. Because I didn't really know what, what to do and where to go for college. So I kind of just thought that the only thing that could point me in a direction was more of like geography, less of like programs about the school. I'm not saying this is the wisest thing to do. And the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque is like actually like a really uh, affordable school for being a state school and stuff like that. And so I went. And yeah, that's kind of what we did. We didn't go to, we went to house parties and bars and stuff like that, but it was really a lot of psychedelics and just people in New Mexico and the Southwest are a little bit strange, a little bit more different. Than yeah. Every college. time you introduced me to a friend, you were like, okay, so so-and-so, but you know, like the, like everyone sort of needs to be prefaced because everyone is a character. <laughs> Disclaimer, yeah. No, and that's so the Southwest. You know, it's like, hey, I like this person. She's just a bit crazy. Oh, hey, this is my friend from college. Uh, he's super great, but he doesn't really like it when you look at him in the direct eyes. <laughs> you know, I don't know. So, um, but yeah, so after Sedona, we went to Albuquerque. We went to Albuquerque because he went to school there. And we were and... driving back through Oklahoma. So we were like, well, okay, we'll you know, go straight through Albuquerque. And Albuquerque is really great, guys. Actually, I think New Mexico is a completely underrated state. How were you describing it to me earlier? Okay. So how I would describe New Mexico, they call it the land of enchantment. And I'll be darned if that just isn't such a perfect way to describe it. So think, take all the cool shit of Arizona that you think of, you know, deserts, cacti. Uh, big skies and then take all the cool shit you know about colorado small towns you know hippies van life travel big mountains and then mush it together and that's new mexico but then sp sprinkle in some like you know spiritual people metaphysical it's a vegan's dream and then you know there's such rich native american history there and like living native american cultures there and just kind of put it all together and it comes out in this I don't know, this community and state that's very big. It's very diverse, but it's very big on heritage, art, and food, to be honest. Oh, the food was they, unbelievable. They love having really good food. Cheap, good food. And it's really specific to that state. So you were also telling me the heritage is super interesting because some people that are New Mexican, right? they were there before the U.S. is ever a thing. Right. And they look Latina, of course, um, but they have never been to Mexico. Their right. family has never been to Mexico. They're from right. New Mexico. So this is actually another thing, why heritage is so important in New Mexico. One of the reasons is like, so yes, there are Native Americans that have been living there for thousands of years, but also you have, um, you know, all the Mesoamericans and stuff. But then you also have the Spanish conquistadors that came over and they conquered them like in the 1600s. So you have people of Spanish descent that have been living there since the 1600s that actually don't speak Spanish anymore and have never been Mexican. Mm -hmm. And then they are still living their thing. So to like the average white person in Missouri might see like a community of Hispanic people living in New Mexico, they might call them like, Mexican or something like that. But the thing is, is New Mexico is almost older than the state of Mexico and the state of the United States. And New Mexico used to be part of Mexico before it was part of the United States. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Yeah, it's really interesting. So there's a phrase that people say, I never crossed the border, the border crossed me. So not only do you have Native Americans, you have New Mexicans, and then you also have Mexican Americans. And it's all there. And then, of course, other transplants and stuff like that. And, you know, for people to be living in New Mexico that when their families came over there in the 1600s, that's a really long time. When you think a lot of Americans, their families came over like the Italians and Irish. They came over in like the late 1800s. Yeah. And so when I moved out to New Mexico, that was like something that I really got in full education. In. And I loved it. I wouldn't change it for the world. So... Super interesting. I know. Wow. Saucy Sid podcast. Anthropology. <laughs> Anthropology. Yeah, that was... That was the... Also, aliens in New Mexico. That's a thing. They're really into aliens there. 
Really? Yeah. Like Area 51, I think, is in uh, Arizona or is it New it's Mexico? Nevada. Can, is it Nevada? But like, <laughs> seriously, like just add into like all the craziness of or just all the richness to the Southwest and then just, oh, that's also the place where all the aliens hang out. Of course. Like Roswell, New Mexico mm-hmm. was where the big alien crash happened and everything. So I don't know. All right. Well, listen, we have to go to Total Wine with our mother. We have to show her. We have a field trip. Right. We have to show her like what we've been drinking. What Our mother exclusively drinks wine from California and we really have to open her up. And also, if you're going to drink it from California, make it natural. Or no one wants these pesticides. Yeah, make it natural. Make it pet nap, you know? (laughs) What? (laughs) No, no. I just, I'm laughing. Like, (laughs) like, yeah. (laughs) Mom, Um, we just want to like go with you to Total Wine so you can buy us some wine. Yes. But our mother's uh, Italian, so... She'll love it. No, she's excited. Yeah. She's like, you know, we're just like doing things together. <laughs> so that was our Southwest, um, leaving San Diego to Scottsdale, Arizona, um, Sedona, all the way through Albuquerque, and then we will tell you how we got to Missouri from here in just a little uh, bit. Or we might have our first guest next week. Oh, you don't know. We might have our next you guest. You don't know. Mm. Stay tuned. Well, thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Be sure to follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It helps us out so much. And leave us a five-star review. Are you not entertained? That was a glad I hope you reference. are. I know. I know. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> are you not entertained? <laughs> oh, um, you knew that. Look, you are so butch. All right. Cheers, Nick. Okay. Bye. Okay. Until next time, guys. Uh, chef's kiss. Chef's kiss.